on July 30th, 1916, at 2.08 a.m., Tom Island, a munitions depot located on the Hudson River in Jersey City, was sabotaged by German spies. The island was named after a dark-skinned fisherman who lived on the island. It was named for the individual who was the only resident of the island at the time. This is kind of the general area of... A munitions depot is a place where the military stores their ammo, explosives, and weapons. We moved up here and we had houses, and rail cars, and sidings, and it was just a big rail yard. We moved up here and with ships alongside, barges, I guess. Black Tom in New York Harbor was a mile long pier on landfill that was in the settlement called Communipaw facing the Statue of Liberty. Black Tom Pier included warehouses and railway tracks of the Lehigh Valley Railroad. It was considered a powder pier filled with close to 100 freight cars loaded with 2 to 4 million pounds of explosives and small arms ammunition. The barge, Johnson 17, had over 50 tons of TNT, which was in violation of safety laws. At the time, the United States was not involved in World War I and claimed to be neutral. However, the U.S. was clearly selling munitions to the British and French. The Germans were angry because the United States was providing the Allied powers with munition and support. Early Sunday morning, July 30th, 1916, an explosion at Black Tom Pier caused people to fly off their beds. Many thought that an earthquake was occurring. The series of explosions took place for hours and could be heard and felt about 90 miles away. The blast registered at 5.5 on the Richter scale. And there's no news on the radio, there's no television. What's the rumors? Are people running around asking things, people out in the street, what to think it's an earthquake or whatever. We, 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 we're comfortable today, something goes wrong, we're right around on the phone, we're on the radio, we're on the television. On the glass, Ocean Avenue, all the neighbors are glass gone. New York City, glass gone. What is that, five point something on the Richter scale, which is an earthquake? People in the Woolworths building in Lower Manhattan witnessed the entire thing, and thinking the time would come, they got on their knees and prayed. There was low security at Black Tom. Anybody was able to come in, there were no gates or barriers. The eight security guards noticed flames on the pier. They knew that Black Tom Munitions Depot had tons of explosives, so a fire would be dangerous, and they fled. When they ran away from the pier, one sounded the fire alarm and alerted the Jersey City Fire Department. At 2.45 a.m., there were flames all over the island, coming out of loaded freight cars as well as the barge Johnson 17. Author Jules Whitcover reports, the blast drilled to the huts and tubes under the river connecting Lower Manhattan with Hoboken and Jersey City. In the Bay View and New York Bay cemeteries, monuments and tombstones toppled over and some vaults were, jol were jolted askew. Ellis Island, full of immigrants, had to be evacuated. Glass windows in Jersey City, Brooklyn, and Manhattan shattered. The people who lived in Jersey City went out to the waterfront to see what was happening. In churches, there was an unusually large amount of worshippers. Downtown Jersey City was total chaos. Bullets were scattering. Munition shells were flying a mile away and exploding. The island was on fire. Hundreds of people were injured. It was, but it was remarkable that only four or five people were killed in the explosion. Uh, there's a little baby who was crushed out of his crib and was hurt. Yeah. The damage was estimated at twenty million dollars, which today would be five hundred million dollars. Police first arrested three railroad company officials, thinking that the fire had started on freight cars. The guards were questioned because they lit smudge pots to keep the mosquitoes away. The fires could not be traced to the smudge pots, and it was temporarily thought that the explosion was an accident. Many companies sued the Lehigh Valley Railroad to recover the cost of their lost munitions at Black Tom. The King of Great Britain and Ireland, as well as the Republic of France, sued the railroad company. Those who sued managed to get their money back. One suspect who was claimed responsible is Michael Kristoff, a 23-year-old Slovak immigrant living in Bayonne. He is believed to have started the fires at Black Tom and was paid $500 to do so. It is said that he bribed two of the guards to get him into the munitions depot. 
Another suspect was Count Johann von Bernstorff, who wanted to help German war efforts by any means necessary. He also funded the sinking of American supply ships heading towards England. Von Bernstorff was in charge of many German spies, one of them being Franz von Rintelen, who had a special pencil bomb designed to detonate days after it was planted. He was responsible for the attacks of 36 ships. States to get into the war in World War II, World War One. The United mm. States had to be dragged into World War One, as, as you probably know, that uh, yes. uh, President President Wilson uh, resisted very strongly uh, getting into World War One, and, and the, the disclosure of, of all these events were were a part of the of, the, of, the, of the, uh, an argument that eventually could be made about uh, the United States going into World War World War One. It wasn't the immediate one because what really was uh, what really broke the back of the resistance of of Wilson to, to get into the war was something called the Zimmerman tele telegram. The, uh, the German foreign o foreign office, uh, whose name is Arthur Zimmerman. Uh, sent a, sent a, uh, a message to the to the the, the, the Mexican government, hmm. saying that uh, if they would do, if they would uh, join the uh, 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 the war against the United States, the United States uh, the, the, the the Germans after the war would would give them Texas and New Mexico, offering that deal with Mexico. Uh, was the straw that broke the camel's back as far as uh, as far as uh, Wilson was concerned, and, sh and shortly thereafter, uh, the United States declared declared war in, on Germany when it was uh, it was in World War One. A thing called the Zimmerman telegram. The Germans tried to get a combination of uh, Mexico and Japan, and them to declare war on the United States from the southern border. They promised. They promised that Mexico they would have back the, the, the area they lost in the Mexican War. In this time, 1916, um, most of the world was in the throes of World War One. Some historians consider the explosions at Black Tom to be the first major terrorist attack on the United States by a foreign country. Mainly it was, it was a factor in the United States becoming a, a world power by uh, getting by getting involved in in World War One, as, as I said. Also, Black Tom is the reason why Liberty State Park is here today, in 1976. When it was being rebuilt, they decided to make a nice park with its beautiful view of the Statue of Liberty. In 1939, Germany was found guilty of sabotage at Black Tom and was ordered $50 million in repairs. World War II delayed the payment and Germany did not pay outstanding war claims related to the Black Tom explosion until 1979, 40 years later. Because the torch of the Statue of Liberty was severely damaged during the explosion, the government repaired the arm and replaced the torch. The original torch is on display in the community center. Railroads were very common here. There were two that ran out of here, the Central Road of New Jersey Terminal and the Lehigh Valley Railroad. Um, so ra rail cars before um, regular cars and trucks became such big shipping, that's a lot of ways they got things back and forth. The original torch from the Statue of Liberty, that's not the original one, was damaged in the explosion as well. Today, nothing remains of the, of the munitions depot, but there is a plaque commemorating the explosion. Thank you for watching our documentary on this forgotten piece of Jersey City history. To his friends he started moaning, it's no joke. For the money spent upon that bar, I could buy myself.